Hey guys, Mike here. Welcome back to another video on the channel. And on the table here in front of me, I've got a whole heap of gear from tools to nuts and bolts to loads of ducting and parts on my left hand side. And if you remember the way the diesel heater was um, in the previous videos, you had like a base unit, which is basically this thing here. The diesel heater sort of clips into this unit here. And this is, this is the complete unit I bought. And in my naivety, I thought, oh, why would I buy it all separately? I can just buy it all as one unit. The one thing it didn't come with was an air filter, which you really do need to add to these units. And you need to put a fuel filter on the actual tank prior to the pump too. But um, the problem I've, ha I've got with this and why I'm gonna move it into this Peli case star box I bought is the pump makes a lot of noise in these units. They're not quiet units. And when you're using it to camp with, I don't particularly want to wear earplugs when I'm out in the, the forest. I actually like to hear what's going on around me when I'm camping. But it makes this sound with the pump. And no matter how much rubber and, and mucking around I've done, there's no way of getting rid of that resonation out of this tinny piece of metal. So I've taken this bit off. I took away the tray on top that holds the fuel tank and I've taken away the two side walls that obviously give the unit the structure. And we're gonna get rid of all of that. And you can unbolt the diesel heater unit and you end up with this bottom bit here. Um, I've cut a small slot there, but that's gonna be for the exhaust, you'll see later. And we're gonna use this and we're gonna mount this inside this case, basically build this unit into like a, a nice quiet, we'll try to make it quiet. And that's kind of why I picked a box that size as well. So I can put insulation in it, um, heat shielding in it, and, and kind of make it self-contained and, and weather resistant. The case itself is an eBay special no-name brand, but it is IP67 rated. Not that, that really matters because we've drilled a load of holes in it for ducting. But the internal sizes, which is the most important thing I was looking for, is the length is 500 millimetres, the width is 350 millimetres, and the height is 280 millimetres. So you've got plenty of room inside to even keep spares for the diesel heater and, and the, the silencer and other parts and things. If you open the case up, um, you see that you know you do get some foam and stuff. I mean, the whole thing came filled with, with all of this foam here. I've got to my right. I've sort of kitted mine out like this, where the exhaust baffle is just here, or a flange, I should really call it, that sort of separates it from the plastic. One thing I would suggest as well is if you can get away with it to have the exhaust outlet on a different side to the air intake to minimise the, the chance of gusts of wind allowing the fumes of, of the heater to go back in through the unit and be blown through the duct. You can actually plumb this silencer in if you, if you buy this uh, Everspatcher tubing 24mm. This can obviously connect onto there and we can put the silencer on the end and we can really vent it away. But anyway, it's time to build the, the actual unit. Um, so I took this platform, you remember, off, off the old structure that arrived, and we're gonna bolt this straight on here. Now that's bolted on there, you can kind of see, we've got a bit of a gap now that we can use between the bottom of the floor of the box and you know, kind of separate the unit so the exhaust pipe has some distance from it. Um, it just gives us a base plate really to work with and that can be mounted into the bottom. But we're gonna mount this air intake now. I'm using just the kind of standard 24 mil internal diameter Bespatcher pipe with a uh, kind of like a diff breather filter on the end of there. So that's on there nice and tight. So we've got a fairly good clean air intake. But now we're gonna put the exhaust uh, in. So the unit is gonna to be to the backward lid part facing of the box. So I've cut this piece away here on the base plate, welded in just a couple of plates there to, to give it some rigidity. And that is gonna kind of connect to that like so. I could have just put it on the other way, but and it's gonna go round the side there like that and connect up to that exhaust outlet. It's obviously got like lots of ridges inside here too. So by putting this stuff in, hopefully make it so it's not gonna leak. 
Okay. Need to make sure that's really tight, that one. Before we put the fuel hose on, um, I'll just show you the fuel tank, and that's the tank that came with the unit. It's about five litres, and the fuel line that comes with the unit is this stuff here, and it's got about a three mil internal diameter. And if you look on the Eberspatcher website and a lot of the recommendations online, they say the maximum internal diameter of the fuel pipe should be 1.5 mil to two mil, because these little pumps, they end up working really, really, really hard if you have fuel line that um, is too wide and the cavitation bubbles that come from the fuel pump basically can't move through the line. So when you've got a big line, you'll see that the bubbles actually stay in the line and, uh, and it kind of um, affects the atomization of the fuel as well once it gets to the glow plug and it, and it kind of basically makes the unit less effective and, and the pump more prone to breaking down in long term use. But we're just going to pop that on. Um, just go straight on the top here. You don't really need a fuel clamp for this as well. I never have ever bothered with one actually on any of the fuel lines and I've never had any leaks really. I guess the pressure is just not high enough despite how thin diesel is. So when you buy this particular box, you get uh, lots of foam with it as I talked about, uh, but you get a piece at the bottom like that with two cutouts and uh, that piece it's kind of useful. What I did is I got some aluminium. I had some scrap aluminium in the garage and uh, yeah, just cut that out as a similar shape really. And that's gonna provide us with like a, a platform at the bottom to stop the exhaust melting through the plastic. But we do obviously need some insulation in there too, um, some foam, or else what will happen is, is that it's gonna just make noise all over again. So what I've done is, is this is too thick. I'm just taking a hacksaw blade and basically seeing whether I can cut it in half. Um, whether or not this works, I don't know. Wow, that worked. Now we've got this piece of foam cut in half, we can just mount this in. And um, it's a little bit too thick still, but what's gonna happen is, is the alumin aluminium plate is gonna compress it. If we turn the box over, um, you'll see it's got like some well, some little feet basically, like most boxes do. Uh, what we're gonna have there is some studs coming out of here with some washers too, like that, and some rubber to quieten it down to whatever it's mounted to, whether it's the roof rack, whether it's a, a tire carrier uh, rack that I'm gonna have to build. Um, and basically the idea really is, is uh, those same studs will, will go through the foam, but they'll also go through the aluminium too and um, they'll crush the foam really, really fat, uh, flat, giving a bit of space between the exhaust and the aluminium. So, you know, it's not directly touching the exhaust, getting heated up and melting the foam. Had to do a little bit of tweaking to the, to the frame. It was too high. Uh, so uh, by bending this and getting it all in place, making it look really flippin' ugly and rubbish, we've got it to look good, uh, or work good even, not look good. But that's gonna sit like that. The front is on a piece of rubber, the back is not. Swing goes Uncle Foamy. Don't be shy now. There it is. Let's see if we can get this garbage in. Oh wow, it actually worked a bit. Sort of, maybe not. Okay, and then we can actually connect the exhaust. Wow, nearly there. Looking at the unit, it, it closes a little bit differently to the Eberspatch unit. It's got this kind of winded, threaded cap anyway at the, at the back, and I guess that's designed to stop stuff getting in, but we don't really need that. Um, as I said, we're gonna use this three inch light bar mount, um, which, Weight's not really something I really care too much about with this because it's a seasonal piece of equipment, um, not permanent addition to the truck. If we take the fuel filter though, I kind of want the fuel filter to be mounted here like that. It needs to be at 50 degrees. Um, that's what the factory recommendations are, manufacturer recommendations. So having that there and not on the side of the tub 
should reduce the noise quite a bit. Yeah, won't tie it up just yet because we need to connect the lines to it. So it's nice to actually move the thing around. But while that's ticking away, like that, we shouldn't hear it. I picked up the bolts this morning. These are M8, A2 stainless, about 100 mil. Um, should be good, really. Should have enough uh, thread on them to let us actually bolt this up. Well, I've disconnected the diesel heater from the aluminium. I'm just gonna take this out and kind of show you what I've done to it. So I've done a little bit of tweaking um, overnight. It's kind of all set up now. So uh, I connected the fuel line. I did have hose clamps and just thought, what the hell, I'll use them anyway. Just good practice. All the wires are wrapped round and um, it's pretty much self-contained now. So this whole unit can just come out like that from the box and um, you know it, it can be it can be opened up pretty easily by taking these bolts off taking the the light bar clamp off opening up the back and then the unit can be disconnected from the platform cleaned and stuff but they only tend to coke up when you run them on low power for long periods i've also mounted the exhaust just against the side of the bracket and elevated it slightly and put on some protection for this this elbow here so it doesn't wear through and um, the fuel lines are all connected up. So prior to the, the fuel pump, we have um, a slightly larger hose than after we've got the 1.3 internal diameter wrapping around and just, and just going into the, into the actual unit there. So we're gonna take that away. Uh, oh yeah, we've also mounted that on the front. It's actually glued on with a real, real tough adhesive. And um, that means the duct can just be slipped straight over now. And uh, yeah, I don't have to muck around with it. But now it's time to bolt down the aluminium. So that's looking pretty good. If you have a look at that, you can see we've, we've cleared up quite a lot of uh, space there and clearance for the heater to mount in. You know, we're pretty clear of, of this flange here. You've got the two studs just sitting in there so the diesel heat can bolt down and um, you know we've got a bit of curvature and stuff but all in all it's quietened it down a bit so let's put the diesel heater in and we'll see how this goes not sure I like the look of this white stuff here Probably uh, you can buy it in black, so maybe at a later date I do that. But I've got this little kind of flange here, and that's going to click in there like that. And then I guess what we can do is use some sort of um, spacer or something to kind of bring this down. But that connects up like that, and then uh, we can direct the heat as and where we want it. Using more of this stove sealer, which is rated up to a thousand degrees C. Just going down the same route again, putting it in the ribs on the pipe. These hose clamps are the ones that come with the, the Chinese diesel heater. And you can see they're not so great really clamp anything so we're gonna have to go buy some proper ones that can actually put a ton of pressure down on this but that stove seal should do us good so I've got to the point where I've started playing around with the fuel tank and, and trying to kind of figure this out and I've also packed in some foam in a lot of places where there won't be heat just to aid in sound deadening and if you look at the lid I've, I've taken away a kind of corrugated piece of foam and put one of the inner sections in where you can tear these little squares away. The reason being is, is um, obviously the fuel tank is going to be here like this. And um, if we close the lid with the foam on it, we don't want the foam to smother this little hole here and stop air getting sucked in with this one-way valve. Or else we're going to have some real issues with the tank kind of imploding on itself and that's going to stress the pump out and kind of 
wreck the whole thing. And I don't want the lid outside the top here because I mean, you know, that defeats the whole point of having um, a weatherproof unit to a degree. I've also done the same with the control board there just because it was getting crushed and um, you know, you're having to put a lot of pressure on it to close the lid due to the height of the unit. But everything's looking pretty good. Um, you know, the fuel line's coming around here now. I've just put a small bracket in um, just to elevate the line so uh, it doesn't get anywhere near this um, exhaust flange. And you know, the foam is, is just kind of packed in in some of the areas where there's no heat. But if we move the tank out the way, uh, you can see I've got a platform here shielding the tank um, from the exhaust. And I'm using hockey pucks um, as, as kind of heavy duty spacers to make sure things stay in place. This is a temporary solution and I can't find anything better. Basically a piece of aluminium, um, like a baking tray type thing, using the old part of the, of the diesel heater shell. And that can just kind of go in there and it covers up the exhaust. You can put these pucks in place, which, which should quieten everything down. This is going to go here. I'm just going to push these pucks down even more. This goes like that. We have a couple more pucks for the time being in there. I know a lot of hockey pucks, but uh, they do work. And, and that's kind of what I'm going to run with right now. But really, before I start getting into any more changes with the fuel system, um, it's time to test the unit. But I've just put this together. It can connect to the outside, like I mentioned earlier. So when we're sleeping at night, we can quieten the unit down and direct the exhaust gas away from the intake. Um, I've insulated it with, with lots of foam. Um, I've actually raised the fuel tank a little bit more on two hockey pucks, and it's actually adhesived down now with some very tough adhesive. Um, so still got plenty of clearance in the lid. You know, when we shut the lid, we don't have to worry about sort of cutting off the the air supply really to the, to the tank. Um, but that's something we're going to have to watch out for and really now it's time for testing. So I'm going to get the Jeep out of the garage, get everything sort of wired in and we're just going to run this thing eight hours full power, see what happens to it. Just gonna get this fueled up. Very cold day today. Minus 35 degrees C last night. And when I woke up this morning, it was minus 27. And I've just set the awning room up and got everything ready, which was actually pretty challenging in these conditions um, due to everything being so hard. The pieces of plastic, the clips, the, the guide where you slide it in, everything. It's, it's not easy to set up. And it's about minus 17 degrees C now, so. I suppose when you're traveling to a destination and the inside of the vehicle warms up, um, the awning room should heat up too and, and be a little bit easier to set up. This is the leisure battery just here and we can switch that on with that switch. But it's connected up to a split charger under the seat and that charges the battery and you can see we're at 12.6 volts so uh, as you drive you, you get a little bit of juice in it and it tends to keep it running. Let's see if we've got power. There we go. Sounds like the unit is firing up now. The pump is going. Blowing out a little bit of smoke to begin with because I had a few startup problems. The air filter was blocked with diff oil and um, the air fuel mixture was completely wrong and it just blew out plumes of smoke. So it's going to burn off a little bit of diesel and seem a bit smoky for a while. Let's have a look at it. It's been running for about half an hour, I think, on 4.8 hertz. Uh, seems okay. Still put my hand on that, that's a good sign. So obviously that won't transfer into the plastic and, and melt it. Maybe. Doesn't feel 
like there's any excessive heat at all actually. That's my one concern. Nothing underneath. Yeah. Seems to be going good. So we've been running for 18 minutes, it says on the clock. Let's have a look at the temperature inside. Plus 13 and a half inside and outside is minus 11 at the moment, so that's pretty damn good. Well, we're inside the awning room, the thermometer or the probe is just here and that's reading out about 14 degrees C now. And that's with the diesel heater running on 5.5 hertz for about six and a half hours. But it is really nice in here. Um, the only thing I would say is the floor um, becomes a bit treacherous because the snow underneath the floor has become basically like, like ice. And um, you know, it's a little bit slippery. So what we really need to do in here is maybe get some foam matting um, that can be clicked into place and form a floor that's packable and storable in the roof bag and then that will um, keep the floor taut and in, in the correct shape and stop slippage uh, yeah and then, then you're going to feel a lot warmer too the main problem in here is just the floor I mean it's not an ideal space really if you think about it um, it is just thin material but it's waterproof and it's windproof so it is keeping the heat in pretty good actually and I've bought some Velcro for the bottoms of the windows. I'm going to get that stitched on tonight. Get everything Velcroed flat so it's going to hold heat a lot better. And um, I've ordered a, a carbon monoxide detector as well for, for in here. And we've got a couple of little vents knocking around too so we can open those up if need be. But all in all I'd say it was a success and um, the unit is performing how I want it to. It's kind of a bit loud at the moment but when you drop it to about 3.5 to 3.9 hertz it makes a big difference to the sound I wanted to run it full power mainly to test it for heat and damage and I'm quite happy to say that there is none but we, I will take it apart and have a look at it but we have a vent up here uh, which is just mesh which is where the probes coming in to read the temperature and my plan is to make a window here on the mesh and put an extra piece of material there to tie the mesh off and I want the heat duct to come through there because I want this thing either on the roof rack or on top of the tyre carrier um, I don't want to have to take it out the back and put it on the floor and move it just want to plug it in, put the duct through here and let it go and um, I think that's the best way to go really Well, we're back in the basement. You can see to the left of me, I've completely dismantled the diesel heater and, and had a good look at it, really just to check um, if anything melted, you know, if there was any kind of discoloration or some of the plastic had gone shiny in some areas and started to warp. And I'm happy to report that nothing has gone wrong with it at all. The only thing I'm gonna change is the inner diameter of this fuel line um, before the fuel pump. Uh, just because we had some, some bubbles in there that got in the airline, they couldn't get out. And um, it could probably just do with being, you know, maybe around two mil internal diameter. But I'm really happy to say that it all went pretty well. Uh, I expected it to actually go wrong and it didn't. So, um, you know, I've lifted the aluminium, I've checked under everything around the exhaust and around the front where the flange comes out through the plastic. Everything's fine, no melting, no, no nothing actually. So. I'm going to run with it like this. I'm going to get it reassembled now. And, um, you know, that's basically going to be the unit we're going to use. And next weekend, going to go camping to a little national park where they've actually ploughed the road this time of year. We're going to set the awning room up and just going to give it a whirl with Max. But what we do need to do is get some click matte foam flooring for the awning room. That stops you slipping because when you've heated that room up, what happens is, is kind of end up with a layer of water underneath the awning room where you've got you know te hotter temperatures inside and snow on the ground so having that click flat uh, matte flooring kind of allows you to give the awning room a nice space and and the nice thing about it is when you've heated it up 
the walls go out like this in the awning room and the whole thing kind of becomes like a hot, hot air balloon, obviously. So you get quite a lot of space and quite a lot of form in there too. But um, I've bought some Velcro, gonna do the windows because that's the main place where the, the warm air is escaping. And um, obviously see the carbon monoxide detector should be here too and then we're good. But if you watch this video and you follow the build, you can look in the description, you can see all the parts I've used no affiliate links, obviously unsponsored. This is just me mucking around with stuff I've bought. Um, and if you're in the market for a diesel heater and you're worried about the Chinese units, I wouldn't be. I have a genuine unit here. This is a, an Eberspatcher. This is about 600 euros to buy one of these. Borrowed this from work because um, we have a lot of these at work that have actually failed. And, um, you know, they've just been chucked basically in the parts room and they're just used for spares and things like that. Um, I have run this unit. It uses a different control panel than the Chinese one, but you can you can rewire it and connect the Chinese control panel up to this um, using this, the same circuit board in here. And you can run the hardware. And yeah, I mean, they, they run pretty much exactly the same. I've taken them all to pieces, bearings, everything, the burner inside. Um, and it's a direct clone, the Chinese unit. This one's actually broken. Um, this Everspatch unit is something to do with the burner inside and the fuel air mixture, it just fires out white smoke and I can't get it to kind of work properly. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't really worry about buying a Chinese diesel heater. The only difference really is the circuit board on the Everspatch is totally waterproof and weather resistant and the one on the, on the Chinese diesel heater isn't. So it could essentially get corrosion over time but you can always carry a spare circuit board and all sorts of parts for these they're all cheap as as chips on ebay and it's all plug and play so if you do on a long-term trip and you need one of these get some spares and um you know and then you're sorted but i hope you've enjoyed this video and um stay tuned for more i'll see you soon in another one take care guys